Hey everyone, it's Mackenzie here with thehenhouse.com. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how we choose to homeschool with an infant, a toddler, and a school age child. Now we have an eight year old, a four year old, and a now two year old, but since we've homeschooled, we've had um, two pregnancies and one school age child. So this might be a season that you can all relate to. Maybe it was a season that you have just come out of, maybe it's a season that you're in now. Um, and whatever it might be, um, hopefully this video is encouraging to you and um, it might be convicting, encouraging, or if anything else, it might make you feel like me too and you can relate. Um, otherwise, you might look at it like, wow, I've got it going on compared to, compared to what she's doing. Or you might really need to look at yourself and see what you need changed within your own home if you're going through a special life change, especially with a newborn. And um, so this month of November, I've been sharing a little bit about um, our routine, our meal planning, and our schedule at home. And with it being November, um, it reminds me of just the hustle and bustle for the holiday season and the holiday prep time ahead. And so I thought this was a very um, perfect time to share how we choose to homeschool with um, such little people and with only one school age child in our home. Um, and homeschooling with an infant is possible. And homeschooling with a toddler and an infant and just one school age child or more than one school age child is possible. Now, I don't have any experience with children that all sit around the table and they all listen at the same exact time and are going through the exact same curriculum. I am dealing with one and only one homeschool aged child and the rest of my kids are non-school aged children. I have just um, gotten my second child to turn four and he has started preschool. We've done a little bit of preschool in the past but it's nothing structured. There's not a organized curriculum that we have chosen to follow and so um, we don't have experience with um, mature homeschool environment, but I do have a lot of insight uh, as to how we have chosen to get through this stage of life with one school age child and the rest toddlers and infants. Um, and the first thing that I wanted to share was that this is an exciting time. Um, a lot of times we think that when we have an infant and we're pregnant, where we're ready to expect our first baby or second baby or third baby and we're trying to figure out how to homeschool, um, immediately it's like fear and um, anxiety or the opposite end of the spectrum might be, oh, you got it. You've done this several times before and you know what you're doing. But when you're down into the nitty gritty and you are doing school, doesn't matter how seasoned or of a new mom that you are, it's going to get intense on certain times of the day. And so... Um, but bringing in new life into your family is an exciting thing. It's a thing to embrace and to welcome and to celebrate. And so um, you might ha not have an infant, but you might have a huge life change. So you might be moving or having a remodel done to your house. Um, you might be expecting twins and you might have two school-aged children. One might have a, um, a, a limitation of some sort. Maybe they are having a reading impairment or hearing impairment or something like that. And um, so I thought I would share with you how I have done it, um, with my children and my family, with, um, our life circumstance and what works well within our family. Um, and the first thing I wanted to share was, um, be flexible and know your capacity, um, because the enemy is going to want to rob and steal your joy from the life circumstance that you're going through. So if you are moving into a new home, you're going through a construction remodel, our basement, this entire basement back here, was non-existent last year. Um, and so we had to relocate all of our stuff from down here upstairs on a kitchen table. Um, you know, if you're welcoming a new baby and you're tired and you're exhausted, the enemy is going to try to rob and steal your joy. And if you're feeling this call to homeschool and the enemy is trying to destroy that calling, um, we're really going to need to cling to God's promises and God's truth in order to get you through some of these um, difficult days with lots of needy children. Um, so it's really important to um, to have a flexible schedule and 
and to know that there's going to be hard days and that you're going to be quick tempered and the best thing that you can do in a situation where you have an infant and a toddler and so many needy children when you're trying to teach and have undistracted undivided attention with your school age child is to really have a good relationship between your parent between parent and child teacher and student and because it doesn't matter how organized or disorganized your homeschool environment is um, if you do not have a good and positive relationship with your homeschooling children, um, it, nothing else matters, right? And so part of the reason why we're homeschooling um, and choosing to stay at home with our children and, and lead them well is because we enjoy our family time with them. And so we need to provide an environment that is doing that. Um, and, you know, James talks about in spite of life cir circumstances, we need to choose joy. And so we have to know that we need to go into um, our school day with flexibility and openness, knowing that there's going to be rough days. Um, and the second thing is, um, having a peace filled home is going to be really difficult when you have, um, a crying baby, a needy child, um, that needs help potty training or something like that. Um, and making peace takes initiative. So if you want a peace filled home, you're not going to get a well-structured and organized home and a good routine unless you put effort and initiative into it. So, um, it's not going to just happen on its own, right? Your house isn't going to get cleaned on its own. Um, so, um, it takes action and initiative to know, and it talks about in Proverbs, um, Proverbs 29, 18 talks about where there's no plan, we will perish. And so that's talking about planning ahead and, um, there's wisdom in preparing our hearts for what is about to come in the season that we're in. And so if you have a new baby or if you have another life circumstance that is in front of you, how can you prepare and be, um, wise in uh, your your homeschooling day and your and within your routine in order to have a more peace filled day. Um, and then the last thing I wrote down is know your capacity. So if you know that you're going to be up sleepless nights because you have a tired and hungry baby or you have sick children um, that are throwing up and puking all over the place and you have to change their sheets and they can't keep anything down, um, just know that that's coming and know. Um, to set realistic expectations because if you're going to try to go do a paper mache project and then you feel like you're letting yourself down because you didn't do it, um, don't even set those expectations. Um, your desires will be made known to you based on your body. God gave us our body for a reason and he, he has given us, um, you know, hunger to let us know we're hungry. And if we're tired, it means our bodies need rest. So listen to um, your bodies and know your capacity so that you can lead a peace filled day and lead your children well um, in order to have that um, positive relationship between you and your students. Okay, so let's get started. So how I choose to homeschool on a regular basis, I will give you a overview of what our schedule looks like at home. And like I said, each family looks different. So this isn't necessarily the way that you need to do it. This is just what works best for us. And so sometimes for me, I like to just see inside someone's home see how they do it. Wish I can just peer in and look and say, oh, okay, I want to do it how she's doing it, or I need to take a few of those tips from her. And it helps just give me affirmation as to what I'm doing and if I'm doing it correctly or if I need to tweak a few things. So um, what I would tell you with homeschooling an infant and a toddler on, um, on top of being flexible and in, um, in order to be a peacemaker, so that means um, taking initiative in making peace in your home, um, is look at the bones of your day. And that's what I do. I go, I strip everything else aside and I forget the garden. I forget raking the leaves. I forget everything except the bones of my day. And everybody has these same bones. It's eating, sleeping, and chores, right? We all need to eat. Everybody needs to sleep. We all need to make, maintain our homes. Okay, if we don't maintain our homes, then we're going to have dishes everywhere. We're going to have chaos. And even with an infant and a toddler, we know that there's a season where we're all just laying like on the couch or something because we're super tired and we can't do that. And that's okay. But what's going to happen is, is if you start seeing that clutter and that chaos keep building up and you don't have a plan um, as how to maintain order during your day, then the enemy is going to start tackling your mind and you're going to get paralyzed. So you need a plan. You need a vision. And you do that with the bones of your day. And that's what we do. On top of those three things, eat, sleep, and have chores um, to maintain your home, um, we need to do school. So there's four things, okay? 
And I do everything based on those four things. If I get those four things done, then I know that I've had a successful day. Um, and then we also break up our day into three chunks. I don't take our schedule and say, okay, from 8 to 9 I do this, from eight, from 9.30 to this I do art, from this time to this time I do that. Um, I don't do that. The only time I do that is from nap time. Nap time is 1 to 3 in our house. It's very rigid. And I'll talk to about talk to you about that in a minute. Um, but we do things in chunks in our house. So we have a morning chunk, an afternoon chunk, and an evening chunk. And that really helps me to lower my expectations instead of feeling like, oh, I'm behind. I was supposed to start something at nine and I'm already a half hour behind. So I don't do that. I just break up my day into simpler chunks to let me know, oh, in the morning, I know I need to do laundry. In the afternoon, I know we need to do this. And in the afternoon, we need to get the laundry done or fold it. Okay, so we have bones, which are eating, sleeping, napping, and if we get school done, that's awesome, and we divide things up into chunks, morning, afternoon, and evening. And everybody has, um, as a contributing part of the family, their three chunks that they're responsible for. So if your kids have a chore chart, parents, we need a chore chart. So my kids have a chore chart, and my oldest has a different chore chart than the younger two. Okay, and this is called Accountable Kids, and Accountable Kids is a, a chore chart system that helps teach children to be a contributing part of the family, and it is divided between um, paid and non-paid chores and rewards for godly behavior and rewards for instilling um, qualities to help get your chores achieved, and um, it has worked well with our oldest. We've switched things around a little bit. Um, we haven't stuck to it completely, but she pretty much knows her routine in the morning. So that is hers. The boys just have a written hand note that is taped. It got ripped in half, but it's on the refrigerator next to hers. Um, and then I have mine. And so you can see I've got three on there. I have my morning, my afternoon, and my evening chunks on there and at the very bottom I wrote down a reminder because I need to see it if you don't have your chore charts in front of you out of sight out of mind right there's no accountability and I wrote down uh, Romans 12 11 tells us never to be lazy in our work but to serve the Lord enthusiastically and that helps me in the mundane um, when I have those days where I feel like I'm constantly doing the dishes and constantly picking up after people um, I can still um choose to seek God's joy over man and man's um, expectations that have been set before me as far as um, doing the dishes, cleaning, things like that. But I can look to um, our Heavenly Father for joy amidst some of these everyday things that I don't like doing all the time. So let's face it, we don't always like doing it, so we need to find joy in it, right? Okay, so um, in the morning, um, I will share with you what we do then, and I'll share with you what we do in the afternoon and what we do in the evening. And this is just an overview um, for this video. Um, in the morning, <clears throat> I keep this, and I have a day planner. So this is a planner that I have chosen to keep underneath my chore chart on the refrigerator so I know when I'm out of sorts and I can't remember where I'm at in my day, I can look there and I say, oh, I know we need to do this in our day and I should probably laminate it to cross it out or to check mark it because that helps me. I haven't done that yet. Um, but I keep it in sight where I know I can refer to it if I need to. And right now it's kind of a reflex where I've looked at it enough and I know what we need to do. Um, and it's, it's especially important, especially when you have infants and toddlers and you can't remember anything. And I've had the worst baby brain um, since we've started. And it's just progressively gotten worse, honestly, since the third child has been born. And so I really need to write things down or I will forget and I will not remember what I need to do. Um, okay, so everybody has one of those. And I keep this in front of me. And in the morning... Um, well, let me back up for a second. Um, it's really important when you are um, in this season um, to keep a routine. And I say that very loosely because if you are in a season where you're up all night and you're tired, then this may not be for you. And um, 
in Thessalonians 5, it talks about how if God has called you to do this or whatever God has called you to do, it's a season. And if you're um, going through a time of suffering or trial, it will pass. And so this is a season, um, you know, infants and toddlers, it's a stage of life that is so beautiful and it's so tough at the same time. Um, but it is a season and God promises to get you through it, especially if he has called you into this ministry of homeschooling um, your children, um, he will get you through it. And so um, in the morning, um, what we do um, in our morning chunk um, is everyone has to stay in their beds until 7 o'clock. And that has really helped me when I have been up all night or I get up really early at that 5 o'clock feeding when I did have um, two newborns while I had just one homeschooling child um, to um, give me a lot of grace in the morning um, because I wasn't going to set an expectation for me to hurry up, get up, get everything done by a certain time and start school because I was so tired from the evening before or staying up with a sick child or staying up to feed or um, just staying up with an infant altogether is just um, rough, right? Um, and so I gave myself a lot of grace where the kids needed to stay in their beds till seven o'clock and they could play quietly. And if they're not doing that, then this is the time you need to um, to do character training, um, discipline. So if your kid is not staying in bed and if, if this is something you choose to do, I would have to keep putting my child in bed until it was seven o'clock. We did not have that issue. Our kids just played quietly in their bed and then their natural clock and their brain just knows when it's seven o'clock to get up. Um, and in that way, um, I don't have to get up and play with them before seven o'clock. And if they do, they would be coloring or reading books or something in their beds. Um, if I'm still sleeping or if I'm just rolling out of bed or still dealing with the baby in the morning. Um, I'm not dealing with the baby right now, but we still have this um, routine where we stay in bed um, until it's 7 o'clock. Um, and during that 7 o'clock time, um, I do one of two things. Um, if I'm up before 7 o'clock, which with a baby, I wasn't. I was just sleeping in and I was really tired, but now... Um, when quiet time is until 7 o'clock, I can take that time if I want to read. So if I get up, I either get up at 6.30 or 7. And if I sleep in, I sleep in until 7.30. So I give myself a lot of grace depending on the day and depending on what we did the night before with a child that was maybe sick or needed us um, in the middle of the night. Um, if I wanted to exercise or go running in the morning, um, I would get up because my husband was still home and go run and um, do that. Um, sometimes I would read, but honestly, I don't read in the morning very well because I feel like I have all these things on my mind that I need to do and I work really well in the morning. So I just know that I can't fully give my attention to reading or I will have this in the back of my mind is hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I have other things to do. So I save that till our quiet time. So um, if I did want to read or have quiet time, um, most of the time I would just pray. Um, and that helps me to just accept the Lord's presence before I got out of my room and knew that I would just save my quiet time till the afternoon. Um, and if I did exercise, which I sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but that would be the time that I would go um, take a walk or I would save that till um, after dinner time. Um, and while the kids are still in bed at seven o'clock, if I'm not exercising or reading, then I go downstairs every day in my morning chunk and always bring down a load of laundry to do in the morning. And I always um, prep for dinner. So I take something out of the freezer, maybe two meats. So the next two days I have something. Um, load of laundry, prep for dinner. Um, I always make my bed because if I don't make my bed, then I just feel like I haven't started anything for the day. I haven't started my day off right. And I always get dressed. I, I honestly like to look good during my day, even if no one sees me, um, because if I'm always in my pajamas, then I just feel like I've never accomplished anything and I don't feel like I can take on the day. But if that's not you and you feel like if you're too dressed up, sometimes you feel like you can't get all dirty. That's just my preference. Um, so I do a load of laundry, I get prepped and I get dressed. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the, the flip flop of, of that is if I sleep in till 7.30, then I do all of that while we do our morning chores. Um, and that is why I have a chore chart because when everyone is doing their chores, then I would be um, doing that load of laundry, prepping for dinner, getting dressed. Um, yeah, and then I would also be getting the boys dressed. So quiet time until 7, and then we do our um, morning chores as far as um, make our beds and um, get ready for breakfast. So quiet time till 7, um, and then... We do breakfast time. 
And at breakfast time is part of those bones. So we talked about the bones of our day we all have to eat. So I know everybody is sitting and they're quiet. And for breakfast, we usually do hot breakfasts because I, when I was nursing, I just couldn't make it on just cereal and a granola bar. So we've just trained our oldest to know how to make pancakes and eggs and things like that. And or freeze things or just microwave something. Um, oatmeal, cereal, those types of things. And that is when we have our morning Bible time. And during our morning Bible time, um, it's around the table. Everybody is quiet. The kids are strapped to their table so they can't be running around. And I have their full attention. They're listening. They're looking at me. And we pray for our day. So after we're eating and we do either a Bible lesson that has to do with what we're learning at home um, as a family or that has to do with our um, school curriculum, um, we pray and we pray for our day and we pray that we would all contribute well, that we would all be peacemakers and we would not provoke. Those are our main things. And then if we have specific prayers for either dad or a missionary or something like that, we keep our prayer requests on the refrigerator and then we move them over to the table in a little bucket so we know that we can easily pull out who are um, people or things that we need to pray for. They're easily available. Um, okay, so quiet time till 7 and then I do my morning chores if they're still in bed by 7 o'clock. And if they're not, the next thing that we do um, is our chores. So we don't do chores before breakfast. We do chores after breakfast because everybody is hungry and cranky if they've been sitting in their beds and, you know, for a half hour. If they get up at 6.30 and it's now 7 and we've, um, <clears throat> we're have we ready to eat, they're hungry. And so chores come next. So everybody is responsible for um, getting dressed obviously brushing their teeth, making their bed, and they have chore charts that they can help check it off to know that they have done it. And that way mom isn't nagging them, but they're held accountable to their chore chart, not to me. Um, and if you have littles, um, toddlers that can't get dressed yet, um, then this is the time that I help them get ready while the older one is getting ready. And so the oldest of, for us um, is able to get ready on her own. She can brush her teeth. Um, she can get dressed and she always makes her bed and that just helps them get ready for their day. And our oldest does piano and so um, we have a, a volume on there so we can turn it to soft, medium, or loud for piano lessons. And so um, the boys' routine is simply to brush their teeth, make their bed, um, get dressed, and unload the dishwasher. And our oldest, um, her chores are to do the same those same things. Um, except instead of doing the dishwasher, she will practice piano in the morning if she wants to. And if she doesn't do piano in the morning, if she doesn't feel awake enough, then she will do that in the afternoon after school is done. Um, and part of her chore routine, um, so if she's not cleaning the litter box or um, watering the plants, just different things that we've set for them on their chore chart, um, this is when she does her morning schoolwork. So after breakfast, we all get our chores done that we need to. The boys don't have schoolwork, so I am taking that time to help get them ready for the morning um, while my oldest is getting ready completely on her own as far as chores, and then she can completely start school on her own if I'm feeding a baby, changing a diaper, or dealing with a tantrum, or something like that. Um, so this is a really important part of our morning chunk. This is like the most important part besides praying um, during um, breakfast time um, because, um, and I wrote this down, we review in the morning and this is what helps me set the tone for our, our afternoon. Um, if, <clears throat> if my child that's school age can do it all on her own, then I can have more attention on the boys um, when they need it, their one-on-one -on -one, either reading time or um, helping them brush their teeth. Um, I can really focus on the character training of the little or two that have already been taught by the older ones. And so when everyone has their bed made, um, their br teeth are brushed, then our oldest goes downstairs and she starts school, which I'll talk about in a minute for what she does specifically. Um, but then the boys who are toddlers and babies, um, they come and help. Their responsibility is to unload the dishwasher. Now, if you have an infant or maybe a one-year-old um, that isn't quite walking yet or just starting to walk, they come with. And so when they are old enough to do the load of la their la load of laundry, excuse me, or they are old enough to do the dishwasher, they will know what to do because you have brought them with you. So our middle child, our four-year-old, he knows how to unload the dishwasher and he knows how to put everything away because we've taken him since he was an infant and brought him with. So he knows the process of this habit. And when I go downstairs in the morning, um, if... 
I am doing my morning chores um, while the kids are doing their chores. Then I bring down the boys when I'm done getting them dressed and show them how to put in the load of laundry or put it into the dryer. So even though they don't know how to help, they are learning that habit and instilling those um, just that routine in their mind. So that way when they are school age or they are old enough, not necessarily school age, but they're old enough to walk and do a few more things independently, they know that this is something familiar to them and it's not something brand new where you're going to fight tantrums and things like that. So I bring them in with my process. Um, It helps them understand just how we work together as a family. Hey, we need to get um, breakfast going. We need to prep dinner. Can you pick out chicken for me? Can you put the socks away? Uh... Um, And going back to my morning chores, I only do one load of laundry a day. I know that sounds crazy, but I will, um, we divide up the laundry. My husband does his own laundry. I do my own laundry. My daughter does her own laundry. And then I do the boys laundry or my husband does the boys laundry. We share that. Um, And the boys just go in together. I just do one load of laundry in the morning. And then I will, once it's done, I put it in the dryer and I will wait to fold that laundry till the afternoon chunk. And I'll explain that chunk um, next. Okay, so once um, everyone has their chores done, uh, Peanut, our oldest, while we are still trying to figure out what we're doing with our chores, she does school on her own in the morning. And now this is important because it's only review. So everything that she learned the day before, I have her practice the next morning. And what we do is we have um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are usually our science days. And then Tuesday, Thursday are usually like music, Spanish, and art days. And so that's just kind of, um, those are just the things that we do on top of our curriculum that that are a part of our curriculum. Um, But we know Um, what we do each day and it's in their morning schoolwork and so their morning school her morning schoolwork which will be a part of the boys when they get older um, is a backpack so everybody has a backpack and even the boys have a backpack so the boys have a backpack to know when I'm old enough I'm going to do this routine too so it's never too early to let your kid that's one or two get their backpack on stuff toys in there stuff the ABCs in there and have their own backpack and have a place for them to pull their backpack out so um so my oldest comes downstairs grabs her backpack out of her cubby and she grabs her calendar work and I call it calendar work in the morning and the calendar work is um a binder that she gets to pick out and decorate we do that in the beginning of the year to help them get really excited about their schoolwork and it has um they do they have to sign in with their name their date um, explain the weather they might have to count some money um, and there might be a game in there but I have it all listed in this binder which I will, I can explain another video. And she will do um, her calendar work and then she does a math page or a math game and she will do her grammar, she will do writing. And then depending on the day, if I have an assignment for science or an art project that is that she needs to finish up or if she needs to cut up something, it's all review and things that she can do on her own. Um, so she does her calendar work and then she will work on her spelling. So if it's a Monday and it's a new um, it's a new word list, then she she knows that she needs to copy the words down. And again, I keep a list of a check mark or a checklist in her calendar of things she needs to do each day that I don't have to give a lot of one-on-one attention to until the afternoon. So if you have an infant and a toddler and you're trying to figure out how to teach your kids all these subjects, um, I go back to the bones of my day and I realize, okay, um, I know that my child needs to learn how to read, write, and learn math. And if I have a screaming child, I'm not going to be able to give my kid the focus that they need. So I wait until, obviously, the infant would go to bed um, and take their nap. So my infants would usually, my infants, my newborns, my babies, they'd go to bed um, usually between like 9 and 11 or 10 and noon, and then they'd go to bed like 1 to 3. So they'd have a morning nap and an afternoon nap. So any time that we are learning something brand new and um, in school, we wait until the kids, the old, the younger two are sleeping or napping. And this could still work. I'll explain that in our afternoon chunk, what our preschooler would do um, during their quiet time while we're doing those important subjects that you cannot combine together as a family. Um, and so she has a backpack, a calendar, and a list of things that she needs to do on her own while I am taking care of two kids that need my attention. So she does her spelling. Uh, This year we're doing um, 
spelling by sound and structure and it's really a second grade spelling book so she's pretty much done with it and we'll be starting a third grade spelling book super easy um, we've chosen to do my father's world um, for the last three or four years um, and part of the reason why we have chosen to use my father's world is because I had an infant and a toddler and I needed somebody to just tell me what to do. I didn't have time to come up with my own curriculum and I felt like when I was coming up with my own curriculum, I didn't know if I was doing enough, I didn't know if I was doing too much. So I knew if I just um, found a curriculum and found a teacher's manual that had an all-inclusive an all -inclusive, um, course for the grade, um, I knew I could at least follow it or take the ideas from it and go with it and feel confident that I Mm -mm, accomplish something for that day because some days we feel like we don't accomplish anything in our day and the thing that I really like about my father's world I've I've used my father's world and then I've also done things on my own and so I don't think I'm exclusively sold on this but the thing that I love about it which I keep saying this I will explain um, a review as to why we love my father's world um, is it's super gentle and they understand the family dynamics um, and they keep things super simple and super gentle. They use that word gentle for a reason. Um, they help you realize that learning is a gentle process and how to gently introduce topics to your children. So if you have a child that's really far behind, it's it's all very simple. So you feel like, wow, I really, I mastered that. They only asked me to do this for 10 minutes today. I did that. So if you want to go above and beyond and you have an accelerated learner or a gifted learner, which my school age child is, then I felt like, wow, I, I went above and beyond what they had expected me to do and I can supplement it as I need to and the reading, writing, and math is all based on grade level and ability so you just can do the grade level that is um, where your child is placed and then everything else you can do together as a family and I won't talk too much about it now um, but the other thing that I really like is that they they don't schedule their days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They have a six-week six day school week and so that gives you time if you have to do doctor's appointments dentist appointments um, to build that extra buffer day in and what they do which we've done before but don't do this year is that they start everything on your second day of school so you if you're learning a new subject or a new theme you don't start on your Monday your Monday is kind of your makeup day and to gently introduce new topics and then Tuesday is like the day where you want to start everything so if you're doing spelling and you're starting a new um word list you wouldn't start Monday you would start Tuesday now we don't do it like that this year um but I really like that extra flex day that they give you in there and they kind of just help you figure out how to fit everything in and I really love it for those reasons and I also really love it because they have the classical they have the thematic and they have unit study um, teaching approach to it which is how my children learn and I don't feel like I'm specifically a classic teacher or a classic learner um, I feel like I'm a combination of all of them and this does that and it's all very um, economically priced and so I can find things new and used and it's not um, you know five books for math and five books for spelling it's just one little book for each subject and it helps me feel like I'm accomplishing something when I have these other little children that need my attention and so those are the few reasons why I absolutely love it. It's a tangent, but um, consider looking into it, um, even if you just followed a teacher manual to help you feel like you are um, following um, some general guidelines. This is a great start um, for you if you have infants and toddlers. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so while my child is reviewing and doing her backpack work, um, I am prepping for the next thing that we need to do for school and that is usually snack time <clears throat> and snack time is another bones right we all need to eat and so I've learned that little bodies like newborns and toddlers are just moving around okay and um, during snack time I know everybody is strapped into a seat and they have food in their mouth so they're listening they're able to listen to their history story or their science story or whatever lesson I'm doing um, and so um, the bones of our day goes from breakfast to snack time to lunch to snack time and then dinner time and um, well let me back up I guess I should say before snack time my child is working on her spelling which I didn't finish spelling by sound and structure which I don't really like it we're using it it's pretty simple but um, I will definitely use it with my boys I think it's really simple and I like it because it's simple for them and I think they'll need it because they have different learning styles and different strengths 
Um, and then in her backpack, she has her math. And we are doing this year um, Singapore math. And Sing Singapore math, I would say, is, an, is a very accelerated math program. I even struggle with it, but my child loves math, and she's an accelerated learner. Um, two, she's in level 2A, 2B, but really it's one grade up, so this is technically a third grade math book. And I... I'm pretty much at like a second grade math level. Like I have a hard time carrying it over, trying to figure out mental math in my head. And so we use that and she will do a review of <clears throat> her math from what we've learned the day before. So I will have a, this is really tiny, but she'll know what page she has to do because I'll put a bookmark in there either the night of or right after she does her workbook, then I'll just say you need to do the next page for tomorrow morning. But she will know that she's always usually doing the next page that's in her notebook and she can do it on her own because she learned the lesson yesterday. So she does her spelling and her math. And with her spelling, sometimes I'll have a game for her to play. It's not just writing everything. It might be, you know, take this little piece of Play-Doh or this string and spell your letters out with it. So I always have a little post-it note that tells what she does in the morning that is um, student-led. So I don't have to help give her that one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, depending on the day, if it's a Tuesday, we're doing um, Spanish art and music. So her Spanish book. Her Spanish book is the complete book of Spanish, which is what we used last year, and we really didn't work on it because my expectations were too high, thinking I'd be able to do and have time for Spanish, and I didn't. So we're just going to redo it again. And so we use the complete book of Spanish, and then we also um, use a couple of um, computer programs that we have for free on our devices and our devices honestly we only use them like once a month I really don't use iPads and things like that we just got an iPad um, we were using our phone for a little bit but I just don't want my little kids learning things on their phones until they're a little bit older so it's kind of like a rite of passage in our house um, but we do fun games we'll do Spanish bingo or some other Spanish things in the afternoon or during quiet time but in the morning she just does one workbook page or one game that is already in here and she will do that if it's a Tuesday or a Thursday. And then um, this book, which I got at a garage sale, is Easy Grammar. And this is her grammar for the day. So she will have a workbook page. And her workbook page is super simple. It's called Easy Grammar for a reason. It's, you can only do one page a day, and it takes simply 15 minutes of your time. So we will learn a lesson the day before, and then she just does the workbook page. And then we, when we're in the afternoon, we learn a new lesson, so she'll know what to do the next day. Okay, so those are like the, the, the reading, writing, and math parts of our day. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with our curriculum. So, you know, we've got geography and history and all of those things that are built in. And depending on the day, this is the time of day when we learn those things. Um, and that is the next bones of our day, which is snack time. So... I skipped backwards. Now I'm going back to snack time. Um, snack time is really important in our, in our house, especially with toddlers because they always want to eat, right? They're teething. They just need something to keep them, their little fingers busy. So I strap everybody in because then I know that nobody's running around. And <clears throat> um, that is when I teach our group subjects. So our family um, really likes the fact that my father's world, and I think a lot of other curriculums do this and whether you're following a, cur a curriculum or not, um, there are certain subjects that you can teach as a family and then certain subjects you have to teach individually. And the ones individually would be, you know, your reading, your writing, and your math or anything that your child is struggling with or is learning that is by level. Um, your science, your art, your history, your geography, all of these things could be taught together as a group. And so we sit down, we have our snack, and that is when I teach um, whatever's in our curriculum. So if I'm teaching a science subject or if we're doing, excuse me, a science experiment, everybody's eating while I'm doing the science experiment, and then we can do our hands-on stuff. Um, if that's, you know, pouring water in the sink and we're learning about floating or wet and dry things, um, different things like that. Um, and I really like the fact that... <clears throat> Um, with your bones of your day, you know that you're getting your kid fed and they're listening and they're attentive and they're sitting still and then you feel like, wow, I got that accomplished. I got geography done or I've got science done. And so 
Um, we really use our snack time as a time to get a lot done as far as group activities. And then I have our kids reiterate what we read. So if we're learning our history about Paul Revere or the Boston Tea Party, then they um, were interacting and we're talking. And I know that they're paying attention and they're strapped in. <laughs> okay. Um, and one thing that I forgot to mention um, while um, my, ch my school age child is doing her calendar and her backpack thing. So all of her review that, that is student led, um, she is at her desk behind me in the green desk. There it is. Um, while she is sitting there doing everything, she has everything within her reach. She can do it on her own. Then the boys are sitting at the table that I'm at right now, and I have two chairs, one on each end, so they are not touching each other. They are not fighting, and I have a manipulative out, and that's a time where one's doing blocks, one might be coloring. And I have a four-year-old now, and so he sits, and while Peanut, who's our school-age child, is doing her review work all on her own and checks everything off until she's done, um, I am with my four-year-old teaching him ABCs, um, <clears throat> phonics, sounds, sound structure, letter recognition, number recognition, and that only takes 15 minutes. So preschool for us is just 15 minutes for one-on-one. -on -one. So if I'm teaching him simple numbers, you know, one to a hundred or letter sounds, that's one-on-one. -on -one. And then he is a part of our science and our history and geography because he's listening during those bone structured times of our day. So the um, the breakfast, the snack time, the two snack times. And then he comes back in during quiet time. And I'll explain that in our next chunk, which brings us to the afternoon. So after we have snack time, usually snack time, depending on how early we start school, um, is anywhere between 9 and 10. So sometimes we have snack time at 9 and sometimes we have snack time at 10. And depending on the day, we have snack time and then science, snack time and then art. Um, and that usually happens... Um, between 9 and 10 o'clock. And so if I get everything done between 9 and 10 o'clock, then they have free play for a little bit. And then we all just take a break and I either <clears throat> clean everything up on my own because I just don't want people touching me. Um, or what we do is we clean up everything that we had been working on and we <clears throat> um, then we take a break. So after morning school is done, if it's done early around 10, 1030, then everybody cleans up their area. And once our space is all clean, then they can go have free play. And it's really important for me to have cleanup time because if I don't have cleanup time, then I have scissors everywhere. And then I have my toddler getting into my scissors and then the toddler's writing on the wall with their markers and then their hands are all full of markers. And then I get mad and angry and, um, yeah, then there's no order and structure. So I know if I have a structure and I have um, a routine and I can have everybody check everything off, then I know, hey, playtime starts after we clean up. Um, <clears throat> so school is done for the morning around 1030 at the latest, and then they have to clean up. And then we usually eat between 11 and 1130. So if we have snack time around nine, then the kids are usually hungry by 11. Cause if they're up between six and 630 and they're just quiet in their beds and they didn't have a full breakfast for whatever reason, then they're hungry. That's why I do hot breakfasts because if I do a hot breakfast, then I know that oatmeal and pancakes and everything has made them last till noon. Um, if we're doing something like going outside. So I always have my kids go outside two times a day. Sometimes before school, if it's nice enough, I will let them go outside and get them exhausted so they want to sit for a longer period of time. So if you have a really active child that doesn't like to sit, have them go outside for a little bit and run some energy out of them. Um, so we, <clears throat> we after we've cleaned up our school space, sometimes we don't, but I like to sometimes. Um, we will clean up and then our kids will either, our older two will either play outside while I'm prepping lunch and then my infant or toddler, tiny toddler, is in their high chair and they're doing something tiny while I'm putting together lunch. Um, and if not and it's rainy, I still make my kids go outside. Um, but if it's really cold, then they will sit down and they will watch a show while I'm getting lunch ready. Um, and their show would be their Magic School Bus or Liberty's Kids or if we're learning about science, it could be um, maybe we're learning about the Ark, so they're watching the Ark or something with the Egyptians. And that is their quiet time where they're sitting still or they're learning the states and the capitals and things like that. Um, and that way I know, hey, I had my kids go on the TV for a little bit and they're sitting still. Because sometimes you need toddlers to just sit still. And if you tell them, hey, if we get school done first, then we can watch our show. That has really helped them get excited about, um creating for them a reason to complete their tasks to get a reward. Um, so kids go outside in the 
<clears throat> the late morning, and then I call them in for lunch. And then lunch is another bones of our day, right? Everybody has to eat, like I keep saying. We eat, and that is when we will have Bible Devo time again. So if we're sitting around the table, our My, my Father's World curriculum goes on a Bible-based um, theme every two weeks. And so if we're studying, I think Jesus is the rock we just got done, then that is when we will read in our Bibles about Jesus is the rock. And I know everybody is sitting and I know everyone's listening because they're being fed and they have someone to keep them occupied while they're, while they're eating. And so we will, we will talk about that or we will talk about our day or we will do silly stuff. But our Bible time is there. Sometimes we do some school, like I'll read a book if it's about um, we're doing American history. So if it's about Indians or Squanto or whatever book that we're reading, we might do a read aloud while we're eating. But when you have infants and toddlers, I feel like it's so hard to do that because I just want to sit and eat and I don't want to do school all day long. So, um, but we for sure do our Bible and Devo time during um, during our meals or our snack time. So we're at lunchtime. So we always get our Bibles out and we talk about if Jesus is the rock, then we will open up to whatever verse talks about Jesus is the rock and there's a devotion and then there's some just some conversation, fun conversation, open-ended conversation. Like how has God been a rock in your life or how can you be a rock for someone else? And so it's not just school, but it's more of those life skills and conversations that we've had. So um, after lunch, <clears throat> um, they will go back outside. So we do um, lunch between 11 and 12. And so if we get done early, if we eat lunch at 11 and we get done at around 11.30, then everybody cleans up lunch. Somebody is always responsible for putting lunch away. And when they are done putting lunch away and I'm done sweeping the floors and sweeping the countertops and putting everything away, which was another part of my routine that I did not explain in the morning, um, then I do that. So every morning I make sure the counters are wiped, the table is wiped, and the floors are swept. That is after each meal and after each snack. That way I know that I am held accountable and I feel like I can um, I can accomplish a simple task as to having order um, and a clean home to the best it can be um, if I do it diligently after each snack and after each meal. So um, after lunch, if we get done at noon, then between 11.30, 12.30, 11 and or either 12 and 1 or 11 30 and 12 30 is when we have our time outside and usually that time outside while I'm making lunch is just 10 or 15 minutes so they're really not outside that long um, and if they don't want to go outside then they just have free play and so after lunch we will go outside we will either go on the trail that we have in our backyard we'll go to the pond or we will go to the park that is in our neighborhood and we will do that for about 45 minutes to an hour depending on the day but what I want to do is um, bring the kids home like 10 minutes before it's quiet time because if I stay out from 12 to 1 then I know 1 o'clock it's going to take a lot longer to put my kids down and prep for our afternoon quiet time slash school time if they if I get home at 1. So what I do is we go from like 12 to 12.45, 12 to 12.30 we go play and then we come home and from 1 to 3 every day, this is another bones of our day um, is quiet time or nap time and this is like the most important time of my day and I would say don't skip this part of your day um, so during quiet time everybody is going to have quiet time everybody even mom so if you have a toddler and if you have an infant depending on what your schedule looks like your nap times may not be this time but this is the time that worked for us so we have a morning um, if we had an infant and it was like 10 to noon then we would be doing some of those reading, writing, and math topics with the school-aged children, and then um, we would finish the rest of school during the second nap. Right now, we are just down to one nap because I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and so the two-year-old takes a nap from one to three, and the four-year-old just stopped taking naps. He can definitely still take naps if he wants to, um, but I do a little bit of work with him during quiet time because if I don't get to, a chance to sit with him and read with him and have some just play time with him, then I do that during quiet time. So um, at 1 o'clock, I put my toddler down for bed, and um, he goes down for bed, and if he does not sleep, then he has to just stay in that room and stay in his crib or just play quietly in there. And if he isn't doing that, then he is um, in the playroom down here having a quiet time. But he has always slept during quiet time. So um, quiet time from 1 to 3, he goes down to sleep. 
and if it's not anything but an hour, I will still take it. So um, when he is down taking a nap, that's when we do our reading or writing and our math or anything else that we did not finish that needs um, teacher-led instruction. Um, so, <clears throat> so when our baby goes down for a nap, um, I take this time, everybody from like 1 to 1.30 or 1 to 2, everybody is having quiet free play. So everyone is leaving mom alone. So if I wanted to do a little bit of blogging, if I wanted to read, this is when my reading time would come in. And what I do is I take a nap. So if if you have little ones at home and they're exhausting you, sleep. Like don't try to do anything else because you're going to need to give that grace to your kids in the afternoon. And if you don't have the grace to give, you are going to be whining and complaining in your head, maybe out loud. Um, you're just going to be wondering why you can't do everything. You're just going to be overwhelmed and the enemy is going to try to rob you of that. And he's just going to take advantage and try to have the foothold um, with this struggle that you're trying to overcome. So sleep. So when I had two kids that were napping, so when I had a one-year-old and a two-year-old and then a two-year-old and three-year-old and then a two-year-old and a four-year-old now, um, they would both sleep from one to three and I would always sleep from one to two or one to one thirty. And then my oldest would either be playing quietly and she'd be knitting or she could play outside or she could do something quietly, take a nap. Um, but from one to one thirty, everybody is quiet. <clears throat> one thirty. 1 to 1.30 or 1 to 2, and that's when I'm taking a nap or I'm praying or I'm reading or I'm just decompressing because by that time I'm just tired and I was hungry, so I ate lunch and I'm just full. And everybody knows that mom needs um, Jesus time. Mom needs to talk to Jesus because if I can't fill myself up with Jesus, then I can't give myself fully to lead my kids well. So sleep is really important. And... <clears throat> Um, our kids know that if they want to do um, a TV in the afternoon or if they want to go on the iPad in the afternoon, which is super special and super rare, honestly, in our house, they need to have their Bible time first. So if someone asks me to go do something, I say, you need to have at least like 20 minutes or so of Bible time. So we get our Bible caddies out, which I'm going to make a video for that um, probably in the month of December while we talk about Advent and preparing our hearts for Christmas. Um, they each have a Bible caddy that has different things in there for them to do for quiet time. And it helps everybody realize the need to just decompress and pray and to calm ourselves and to collect ourselves and to reconnect because I need to reconnect. Um, if I'm not reconnecting to the Father, it is just like I just feel disconnected, I feel tempted, I feel tired, and I need um, that that living water uh, for myself. So um, <clears throat> take a nap. That's what I would do. Take a nap. And still a quiet time that works for you where everyone's having quiet time, including yourself. Um, and then around 1.30, 1.30 to 3 or 2 to 3 is that time when I do the teacher-led things, which would be reading, writing, and the math. Reading, writing, grammar, math, whatever. Um, and... I have a um, preschool age child then, so if we want to read some books, um, we can do a reading time where it's not interrupted by a crying baby. Because sometimes when you're crying and your toddlers are pulling and ripping paper, it's really hard for the other kids to understand and listen. So sometimes we save those um, quiet times for either around the table when we eat or when the baby or little toddlers are sleeping. And... Mm -mm. Um, a four-year-old's doing preschool. He doesn't do anything as far as one-on-one -on -one in the afternoon except a little bit of reading time on mom's lap. And then um, I give him audio books to listen to. We get them at the library. He can just um, read and listen to them on his own, and he knows that he has three or four he needs to listen to before he can have free play. And if he has free play, then I usually give him something that is school-related, but it's um, it's a manipulative or something fun. So if it's Play-Doh and letters or coloring a letter or putting stickers on a letter or a number, um, he's doing that. He really likes um, writing letters in the sand with his diggers and rocks and things like that. So um, <clears throat> so that is what we do between 1 and 3, quiet time, and then the teacher-led schooling. And that has really worked well to help everybody focus when there's chaos the rest of the day with crying babies and needy kids with learning how to potty train and things like that. So... Um, <clears throat> and then after quiet time is over, everybody has had um, <clears throat> school done for the day. And um, sometimes if school is not done for the day, what we would do is after quiet time, everybody's hungry. And during quiet time, if you haven't rested for a little bit, we've done school, so our brains are kind of fried by 3 o'clock. 
And so we go, and here's another bones again. We have snack time. So if we need to finish a science experiment or an art project or we're wanting to do Play-Doh, then we always have our snack. Um, <clears throat> and then I finish if I need to finish something. So we never go past like three or four for school, but sometimes we break up our day um, around snack time, and that's in the afternoon when we, if we want to make... Um, bread if we were learning about Jesus at the bread of life and we were measuring a recipe we would have our snack and then we would all be around the table with infants strapped in so they can't be running everywhere and they're being fed so they're not hungry and cranky and you can be fully present with your kids without feeling overwhelmed um like I said we don't always do school like at three o'clock when we do snack time but I actually utilize it quite a bit on days where I feel like I need to catch up so um after that we Everyone has had a snack and everyone um, is going to have their second quiet time. I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, we go into our um, late afternoon slash evening chunk. Okay, so part of this is afternoon, part of this is evening. Um, our afternoon snack, we have our afternoon snack, and then if we have to finish school while we're having our snack, we do that. And then when everybody is done, everybody is doing their afternoon chores. So everybody has an afternoon chore. In order to have free time, they have to finish um, their afternoon chore. Um, and the afternoon chore might be mm -mm, um, folding their laundry or unloading the dishwasher or piano. Those are usually the main things um, that we have them do. There's some other chores that they do, but those are the main things. So that laundry that I did in the morning, I don't fold it until the afternoon after snack time. I don't do, do it during quiet time because that's when I'm doing school and when I'm resting or sleeping or doing something for me that's not related to anybody else. Um, I do my one load of laundry um, after snack time when the kids are watching their second show for the day. So usually the kids watch two shows. And that is when I know I can have everybody um, sitting quietly. They're all waking up. They're not ready to quite do something yet. They're not coherent. So I give them a snack and they sit in front of the TV and that gives them a half hour to wake up. And that gives me time to fold my laundry, whether that's in front of the TV or listening to a podcast or, um, you know, my oldest and I are folding laundry and having a good conversation or we're playing a game with our laundry or something like that. Um, and while that show is going on, I'm folding the laundry and then I'm also prepping for dinner. So if I didn't prep for dinner all the way with the meat in the morning, then I'll be cutting what I didn't cut in the morning, um, like vegetables to put in for stir fry or whatever. And that way I know <clears throat> I'm not going to be out of sorts when it's between four and six and I'm trying to prep for dinner and I'm super hungry because when you're nursing and you have little kids that are all over you, it's hard to cook that raw meat, you know, and then go wash your hands and go help change a dirty diaper and then help, you know, put back all the Tupperware that came out of the drawer when you have dirty raw hands. So I put the kids in front of the TV or I rarely let them use the iPad, but if they're really good and they've done something to um, on their chart that gives them a rewards card, then they can go on the iPad, but really that happens like once, I don't know, once every month or so, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so around this time, it's like 3.30, 4 o'clock, and so I know around 4 o'clock is usually 3.30, 4 o'clock. Um, the afternoon chores happen while the kids um, finish their chores and then watch TV. So I know that I can be a little bit more attentive to what I need to get done, and I don't feel so stressed when people are pulling and nagging on me for my attention. Um <clears throat> Okay, so after everybody's done with their chores, I'm done with my chores, then um, they can go outside, they can play on their own, and the older two, the four-year-old and the eight-year-old can go outside and play in the front yard or the backyard the way that our house is set up. You can watch them pretty easily outside, and then the, the infant or the little tiny toddler, depending on what you have at home, um, is inside with me, and sometimes I'm just resting, reading a book, or I'm just laying on the couch, or I'm stretching, or just... I don't know, doing something for myself, then um, the toddlers are inside with me while we're just kind of decompressing and everyone's just having their own decompression time, um, free time. Um, so then once dinner is ready, which we always eat dinner between 5 and 5.30 because by this time I am so hungry, like I'm physically drained. I have carried people, I've picked people up, I've put them down, I've dealt with either a tantrum, I've dealt with potty training, or I've dealt with math, which I'm not very good at, my brain is just full. So I need to eat before I'm like shaking. And especially when you have a nursing, your nursing mom and you're hungry and you need to be eating all the time. I can't wait till like six or seven o'clock. So we eat early, like five, five thirty, and 
<clears throat> if we have any extracurricular activities, they, they're they not any earlier than four. Um, if there was an art class from four to five, we would do that, but we try to schedule things after dinner or between that four to five o'clock window. Um, so we always eat around 5, 5.30, and um, someone is always in charge of doing um, setting the table, and then someone is always in charge of cleaning up with mom. And so we rotate that either like on a monthly basis or something like that. But um, after dinner time, or once we have dinner time, that is our evening chunk of the day. And this is the last chunk um, of our day. And so we eat dinner, and then um, someone's helping me set the table. Someone's helping me clear the table. And then... Um, after that, if we have time, if it's like 6 o'clock and it's still light out, we can do a family walk or uh, we might do something together as a family. But when it starts getting dark out early, like we're in November right now and it's dark pretty early, um, we get uh, bedtime done early. So when you have little tiny humans that need their sleep um, and they get up really early, we try to push everything um, back a little bit. And so that's why we have dinner ready between 5 and 5.30 because then by that time we can enjoy our dinner and then we can start putting them to bed between 6 and 6.30. And that sounds super early, but by the time you have changing diapers, you're doing the bath and all of those things with little kids, it takes extra time. You have to add like 15 to 30 minute buffer time just to get some of these simple things done. So dinner time is the beginning of our evening chunk. And when we have dinner, um, we usually try to... <clears throat> um, do something as a family as we're eating because that's the last bones of our day and that would be either dad reading um, a bible story out of um, the bible or um, if peanut's doing her awana's homework then we talk about the awana connection card that brings the family together and helps talk about the theme um, or we read a book which um, we've read wisdom with the millers any of the miller book series are awesome so we read those um, because everybody is listening um, and if we aren't reading the Bible, doing Awana, or doing one of those books as a family, then we're just talking as a family about um, what we did that day for school. And that helps our school age child reiterate what she's learned and that lets dad in on what we've done during the day. If we haven't sent him pictures of the project that we've done or a tantrum that we've had and dad has to deal with the discipline after dinner. Um, then we can talk about our day and we try to always ask like, what was the best part of your day? What made you cry? What were you afraid of? What did you overcome? How did God work in your day? Different things like that. And then after dinner, somebody helps clear the table, and then we do <clears throat> we do bath time. And bath time is sometimes a time that we've done in the morning when um, our oldest is doing all of her review and calendar work. Sometimes I would put the boys up in the bath and give them their time, and that's kind of their one-on-one -on -one individual time that we get to have fun and play with them and learn the alphabet with the little foams letters that stick in the bathtub um we didn't really do that that much um we did that when we had to help calm them down to get them ready for a nap or bedtime and that's why we do it at bedtime um, because it helps calm them down and they're very active especially because they're um, tiny human beings that need lots of energy burned off in order for them to crash right um so <clears throat> um, they'd have bath time and everybody for bath time knows the routine so depending on what your house looks like everyone has their own routine um, as far as getting their dress or getting dressed and brushing their teeth and after everyone is dressed their teeth are brushed then we come together as a family and we do prayer requests and <clears throat> we might read a story and the story might be a devotion book that has to do with what they're learning um, for character training and bible um, learning at home so the boys have a boy bible that they're learning from and peanut our oldest has a girl one that she's learning from and this is a time that we <clears throat> they can look at them while we're reading together as a family and the younger two can sit quietly and look at their books or play with their toys while we um, do prayer requests or we read a story if we haven't read um, the wisdom with the miller book or another book that we like that is about um, character training or a book of the bible then we'll do it right before bedtime and we try to all pray together and take prayer requests and what we do is we have a bible caddy which i'll do another video on the bible caddy um we have a notebook in there and we encourage our kids to learn handwriting mm, through the bible uh, prayer request book and what they do is if we have prayer requests or they have prayer requests then they write down you know whatever learning how to ride my bike or 
whatever. And if the boys don't know how to do it, they still get one. They still get one because then they can pull it out and then mommy or daddy writes it down and then they can see that this habit is being instilled in them by this pattern and then in this routine and this behavior that they have been learning how to do since they've been little. And it becomes familiar and it becomes reflex to them and it doesn't become awkward or weird when we say, hey, everyone's getting their Bible caddies out and we're having quiet time. Um, sometimes when dad is home and mom doesn't want to put anybody down, um, dad will put everybody down and during that time I will just kind of decompress, finish if there's anything that I need to do um, that I didn't finish during the day. And if he's with the boys, which are our two little ones, then he is um, reading a, like a Mighty Warrior book or a book related towards boys or guys. And um, he does that with them and then he tucks them in and prays with them um, and I just come in and give them a kiss. And then on nights that he's not home, we just do the same thing except mom's doing it instead of dad. And then dad would be putting down our oldest um, while I'm kind of decompressing. And so um, we have quiet time before bed. So if somebody's waiting for dad to tuck them in, then they know that they can do something quietly in their beds until dad comes down. And then that's the time that they have one-on-one -on -one, um, devo time with him, depending on what they're studying or what they're learning or if they want to read a fancy Nancy book or something like that. That's when... We will do um, that type of reading time before bed. <clears throat> um, so that's pretty much it for our routine at home. Um, the evening chunk kind of can get disarrayed because um, people get tired easily, especially with little ones. Their schedules might not be the same time as everybody else's, and that's what was a big struggle for us. Um, we had someone that wanted to sleep right at 7 o'clock, and then we had someone that didn't want to go to bed until 8, 8.30. And then when you have a newborn, they just might sleep from 8 to 9 and get up at midnight or 1 or they might be sleeping during dinner time and get up between 9 and 2 in the morning or something. And so... Um, we just always made sure that before bed, um, everybody had um, bath time and did their evening chores as far as um, getting their pajamas on, brushing their teeth, and then we had family time. So that family reading time was um, not at a specific time. It was just before everybody was winding down before bed. And then um, depending on what time everybody went to bed, um, based on the ages and stages of our kids, we would just kind of do it according to where they were with um, developmentally where they were at. So so hopefully this was kind of a lot, but hopefully it was encouraging to you and you got some tips, pointers. Um, as far as um, the morning, I skipped over, I have that over here, my binder. Um, I forgot to share <clears throat> um, meal planning. Um, I try to have my meal plan for the week or the two weeks when we do grocery shopping. My husband does all of the grocery shopping because we own a, um, a skinny rink here in North Iowa and he has to do all the concession stand shopping for our candy and chips and stuff. So he just goes and I give him the list and then he brings it home. And then I plan all of the meals and anything from a co-op or online as far as groceries go, I would buy or anything in bulk. Um, and then if... If I wanted to go to the grocery store, which I don't, I, I love grocery shopping, but my baby brain, I would go and then I would forget what I'm getting, even though I had a list. And then I would feel this rush of having to come back home because I was nursing or leaking or something. And I just felt this anxiety. So it just works better that um, he does the grocery shopping. I make the list, I plan the meals. And then if we didn't do that, then we would probably hire the grocery store to come and deliver it because it's... Um, free delivery if you spend over $100 and we spend around $100 a week on groceries anyway. So it just works out that way. Um, but having a meal plan it has really helped to to help in that planning process and to know um, what you're going to plan for the week so you don't feel like last minute frazzled. And everyone can get hot meals and feel like they're fed and loved and all that good stuff. So anyways, I will post in the comments the accountable kids that we use for our chore chart for our kids and if you have any questions or would like me to put any links um you can contact me at thehenhouse.com and also um if you go to thehenhouse.com you can check my facebook page and that also has a way for you to contact me as well um, i look forward to continuing on the conversation here and hopefully i will make a video on the um the bible caddy books uh the bible caddy um 
routine that we use here at our house and some other good stuff. So looking forward to connecting with you again and enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have a great day. Bye.